Take your Bibles. Welcome, everybody. Welcome those watching by television. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for coming to the Spirit Word Ministries. Trust that you'll be super blessed. Amen. Have you got your Bibles? Yes. So, this is the Word of God. I live by it. I order my life by it. I will see what's promised in it. It's all yes and amen in Christ. It will be fulfilled in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your Bible down. Right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, so there was the word. Hmm? But in between, God said, the Bible says, and the earth was empty and without form. And the Spirit of the Lord hovered upon the face of the waters. So there we have the Spirit of the Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, void, without form. The Spirit of the Lord hovered upon the face of the water, and God said, so there was the Word. So in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And everything that was made was made by Him. Which is the Word. Which is God. Okay? And nothing was made that was made was made without him. So it was him. But it was also with him. Hmm? So God says, in the beginning there I was. And the way I was, it was the spirit. But the way I manifested was the word. So everything in the beginning was the word. So when I made, it was with the word which was actually me, which is the Word, so I can manifest me or with me. Okay? So years later, angel of the Lord appeared unto Mary, little girl, 12, 13 years old, and said, Mary, you have found favor with God. You shall be found pregnant and the holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called Son of God. So, Mary, you're going to be found pregnant, and the holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called Son of God. Mary says, how can this be? I've never known a man. Angel said, oh, simple. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And the power of the Almighty shall overshadow you. She said, let it be to me according to your word. So again, when will he be called Son of God? When the Spirit will once again come upon somebody and hover over somebody and the holy thing that shall be born shall be called son of God now in the second psalm it says and uh, it's quoted there in Acts chapter 13 where Paul preaches he says even is it is quoted in the second psalm you are my son God now speaking you are my son this day have I begotten you so God now again speaks by his word. And he says something about somebody that is born. You are my son. My son 
And he used the word, this day have I begotten you. Okay? Begotten you. But in Isaiah 9 verse 5, here comes the prophecy of this birth of this man. In Isaiah 7, you know, this Spirit of the Lord come, angel of the Lord appear, glory of the Lord is there, and King Ahaz is there, and here it comes, he says, choose for yourself a sign. Ahaz said, no, I, I, I will not ask God for signs, I will not tempt God. God says, no, 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 you don't have to tempt me, but I'm going to give you a sign. The virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. And you shall call him. You shall call him. Okay? You shall call him Emmanuel being interpreted God is now with us. So you shall call him Emmanuel. You shall call him God is with us. Okay? Now in Isaiah chapter 9... Here comes God again speaking. He says, For unto us, spoke, speaking by the prophet Isaiah, a child is born. A son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. So, these three duties that he will come, he will be born a child. Okay. Mary and Joseph, here comes the angel Gabriel in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and the rest up to 27. He says, uh, you know, Mary going to be pregnant. Joseph, hey, whoa, whoa. You know, and, and Mary says, whoa, whoa. And he says, hey, but when he is born, when he is born, you shall call him. Here it comes again. You shall call him Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. Oh, man, they freak out. Here comes the word again. Angel come again. He says, oh, Mary's going to be pregnant. And you shall call him son of God. Yeah. Hmm? And in Philippians 2 says, God raised him and gave him a name above every name. You know, so that the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. So he's Jesus yeah. and he's Lord. Okay, but what about son? Okay, so here comes Jesus, and uh, God says in the second psalm, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Hmm? You're my son. Okay, here's Jesus for 30 years. Not even his cousin John, which baptized him, that said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away. Not even he realized this is truly he, because when he was to be beheaded by Herod, you know, he sent his disciples to Jesus and asked, Are you the one that should come, or do we still wait for another? Jesus said, Go show John what you see and hear the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, and the gospel is preached and stuff like that. You know, but here comes the baptism of water. Jesus comes out of the water, heavens open up, Holy Spirit comes down in bodily form like a dove and he settles upon Jesus and the word comes from heaven, from the clouds. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Oh my goodness. Okay, man. Days pass, years pass, and, you know, Jesus is now ready to be crucified, and he calls James, Peter, and John, and he says, let's go to the mountain. He leaves the other disciples at the bottom, and when he comes on top of the mountain, you know, a cloud covers the mountain. And from the cloud, a voice speaks from heaven. We call it Mount of Transfiguration. His clothes become white with any glistener. Elijah and Moses appear, and the voice says... This is my son for another time. Hear ye him. Hmm? Okay. So Hebrews chapter 1. God who at diverse manners and times spoke to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by the son. By who? Okay. Whom he has appointed heir of all things. So God has now spoken to us by the Son. 
He is the brightness of the glory of God. The outraying brilliance of the divine. Who upholds everything by the word of his power. Because you shall receive power when the Spirit comes upon you. So God spoke to us by the Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. You know, he's the brightness of the glory of God. So all the glory of God shines through the Son, who is the heir of all things, you know, and uh, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then he goes on to say in chapter 1 of Hebrews over and over again, to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son. But of the son, he says, your throne, O God or O Lord, is forever. You know? Unto us a child is born, a son is given, government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called, another time, he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, there is no real full stop there. Yet, God never called Jesus, Jesus. God never called Jesus wonderful. God never called Jesus Emmanuel. God never called Jesus bright morning star. God never called Jesus Rose of Sharon. God never called Jesus Lily of the Valley. God never called Jesus bread of life. God said of him, Son. That's the only title that God gave to the one that was born of a woman. Okay? God just called him son. So God never called him all this. He shall be called, but God says, you are my son. But God never said to an angel, you are my son. But of the son, your throne, O God, is forever. Hmm? So here comes Jesus out of water baptism. Spirit is now upon him, you know. And uh, John chapter 6 verse 27 says, God sealed him with the Holy Spirit. Huh? Uh, the Word, okay, John chapter 1 verse 14, the Word was now in flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory. Remember, he is the outraging brilliance of the glory of the Father. The Word is now in flesh. In other words, the Word is manifesting the Spirit God in the realm of seeing. Because God has never been seen. No man has ever seen God. All right? So, God, the Word, which was God, which was with God, is now manifested in flesh. So, God is now from the Spirit realm, in flesh realm, by the Word, coming into the realm of seeing. In the realm of touching. You can read Peter and 1 John and see. So God is now in the realm of the senses. Is that okay? So, but God is spirit. But now God is where people is in flesh. People can see. People can touch. People can feel it. That's right. Hmm? So, here goes Jesus, led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. After 40 days, he gets hungry. So, here comes the devil. Not with a fork <laughs> and a fork tail. He doesn't jump up in a black suit with a red hood. He doesn't jump up and say, fire burning from his fork. He says, hey! Mr. Jesus, I'm Mr. Devil. No, 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 no. How does he come? Does he say to him, Hey, I see you're hungry. Because you're hungry, why don't you turn these stones into bread? No. He comes by something that was mentioned 40 days earlier. 
The holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called Son of God. But you can call him Jesus, you can call him Wonderful, you can call him Counselor, but I say to you, that only thing that shall be called Son of God, it is written in the second Psalm, you are my Son, this day have I begot you. God spoke to us by the prophets, but in these last days he spoke to us by the Son, to which of the angels said God at any time, you are my Son. So God doesn't call him names, God only call him Son. All right, so here comes the devil, Luke 4 and Matthew 4. And he doesn't tempt him with hunger. He doesn't tempt him with jumping from. He said, if you are the son. That was the last time God spoke from the heavens. This is my son. So the devil knows all the prophecies. So here he comes. If you are the son. Turn the stones. Jesus said. Hey, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, quoting from Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, but by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. There was a, hey, got me there. He says, if you are the son, this is now the devil tempting him, jump from this pinnacle because he's going to give the angels charge over there. Jesus says to Satan, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Somebody got it? He tempts him on sonship. Jesus said, I'm the Lord. I am God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Okay. Worry about that. Okay. So here comes Jesus out of the wilderness. Enters into the synagogue. Take the scroll, find the place in the book of Isaiah, roll it open. Isaiah 61, he starts reading. The Spirit, oh man, here we have it again. And we had it again, and we had it again. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for He has anointed me. The word anoint in Greek means Christos. Christ. In Hebrew, Mashiach, it both means to rub it on or rub it in. So, Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has Christed me. To preach the gospel, to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, bind the broken hearts, open the blind eyes, stuff like that, stuff like that, stuff like that, stuff like that. Jesus closed the scroll, sit down, and the Bible says, and every eye in the synagogue was fastened on him. Because everybody that subscribed was waiting for this prophecy. That's what they studied. Every eye on him. And Jesus said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day is this scripture for Man, freak the Pharisees, Sadducees out. Hmm? So Jesus stood up and walked out of the synagogue. As he walked out, man, oh man, ha, huh, a demon possessed guy met him. They fall down in front of him. They say, You can check it out. Luke chapter 4. We know who you are. Hey, they just tempted him a few hours ago in the wilderness. They should know by now what he said there and what happened. They screamed. We know who you are. The Christ. The Son. Of the living God. So... If you are the son, if you are the son, when he came out of the synagogue, this day the scriptures fulfilled in your ears, bam, bidi, bam, the demons start crying out. We know who you are, the Christ. Okay, if you struggle with the word later on today, you are the anointed, the son of the living God. Not you are the Christ, the Jesus. 
Not you are the Christ, the Lord. You are the Christ, the Son. So if you have the Spirit, if you have the Spirit, if you have the Spirit upon you, which is anointed, if you have the Spirit, that means you are the Son. God said, you are my Son. This day have I begun. That's why it is God, but this is also God with God, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Oh, my God. Man, you know, Jesus is now on his way to be crucified. Turns to the disciples there in Matthew 16. He says, who do men say that I... We got to put this portion. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man? Okay, now the Nicene Creed that was brought out hundreds of years ago, this is when they wrote the Creed I believe in God the Father, I believe in God the Son, I believe, you know, they try. How do we describe Him? And this is the way it was written in the Nicene Creed. He is man of very man, and he is God of very God. Mm-hmm. Just keep that in your mind. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They say, oh, some say John the Baptist that came out of the dead. Some say Elijah. Some say the prophet. Jesus says, but you, who do you say that I am? Peter said, You are the Christ, the anointed. You are the Son of God. Jesus says to Peter, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. Peter's been with him three years. He must have known he is the Christ. But Peter said something this day that he must have said hundreds of times. But this day he spoke it in profoundness, getting the revelation of what they are busy with. That's why he writes it in his, same, his epistle of Peter. He says, we were there with him on the mountain. We touched him. We seen him. We felt him. We heard him. We knew when he came in the realm of the senses. Because God is spirit. Nobody has ever seen God. Okay? So, who do you say? I say you are the Christ, the Son of Flesh and blood does not reveal this. But my Father. You are the Christ, the Son of God. Okay? The living God. Okay? Flesh and blood does not reveal this. But my Father. Why do Jesus now all of a sudden say Father? Because the word came out, Son. You are the Son, Jesus said. My Father revealed that I am the Son. And this is the revelation I want you to have. There's a Father and there's a Son. You are my Son. This day have I begotten you. John 12 through John 17. This is what Jesus is saying. He says, uh, you guys, I'm going to go away now. In short, I'm going to go to the Father. Hey, he said, hey, if you struggle to believe the stuff that you see now, what's going to happen when I go back to the Father? From where I came from. He says, it is better for you that I go, because if I don't go, the Spirit can't come to you. But if I go, I will send you the promise of the Father. And if he comes, he will teach you everything that I said and do. And even more will he tell you because I go to the Father. And then he says over and over, as from John 5 and John 8 and John 10 and John 12 through 17. In those chapters that I just read, I and the Father are one. Careful. The works that I do is not me. It's actually the Father in me. The words that I speak is actually not me. It's actually the Father in me. It's him speaking. The works that I do is actually not me, but the Father that sent me. The words that I speak are not me, but the Father that sent me. So he says, the Father in me, the Father in me. The Father sent me, the Father sent me. So there's this Father, Son, Father, Son. If I go, then the Spirit will come. If I don't go, the Spirit can't come. And then uh, 
The works that I do shall you do also. And greater works than he shall do, because I go to the Father. So Jesus only referred to the Father once as God. In the book of John, plus minus 140 times, Jesus calls God Father. The ones he calling God is in John chapter 4, the woman at the well, she said, give me water. She says, sir, you've got nothing to do. He said, if you know the gift of God, you'd ask him to get you water. She says, Lord, how are you going to get the water? He says, woman. Go call your husband, man. She said, God, no. She said, he said, you had five and the one you're staying with now is not yours. She said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Where shall we worship? You're on the mountain or shall we go to Jerusalem like you Jews says? Jesus says, the Father is looking for worshipers. Listen, the Father is looking for worshipers that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. For God is spirit. And they that worship the Father must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Who came upon Mary to make her pregnant? So who's the father? Hey guys, please remember to click the subscribe button on your screen so that we can inform you when we're uploading more content and we have a full library of content to be uploaded, so you're going to be blessed by that. Remember to click subscribe. Bless you.